Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and the conclusion of our study of Ephesians chapter 3 verses 13 through 15 that we've titled The Whole Family in Heaven and Earth. This is part two of two. And the wicked rarely advertise what they're about to do to you. You just go out one day, boom, it's up in smoke. Is there not a cause? So what did David do? He killed the giant. Amen. Aren't you glad that David didn't say, uh, you know what? That makes me mad. You people are ungrateful. Dad, Dad's always put up with you abusing me because I'm the youngest and you're just jealous. I'm leaving. <laughs> and we had never would have heard about David killing Goliath. You know, that's the thing about this. Sit back. Sit back and think about this. Think about it. A lot of these people who faint, what they might find out when they stand before the Lord is right when they fainted was when God was about to give them the victory. Right when they fainted, God was about to turn their life over. God was about to pour it on. They were going to have a cup overflowing. And they fainted. There's a story of a, this is supposed to be a true story of a fellow whose dad uh, had, had a beautiful automobile. And his son always said, Well, when I get old enough for a car, I want that car, dad. And he said, Well, son, you know, you do what you're supposed to do and everything, I'll, you'll get that car. And uh, it's supposed to be when he went to college. So he goes off to college. And uh, when he's packed up and ready to go, he's expecting to get the car. And his dad hands him a Bible. And he takes the Bible. He says, there you go, son. You, you've done well. I'm proud of you. And instead of saying anything, he just gets angry, gets in his car, flings the Bible down. He's in a nice little box, you know, brand new. He threw it over. The, goes off to college. Starts drinking. Starts partying, throwing his life away. Then he gets a phone call that his dad had died of a heart attack. And he says, you know, I don't care. Then he started feeling bad. And he reached over, got that Bible. He opened it up. And he opened up, there's a, it seemed to open naturally. And there was a key His dad had given him the car. His faith in his dad had fainted right when his dad was pouring it on. And then out of spite, goes off living like a fool. And then his dad dies and they don't speak. Just think about how that matches what some of us have done in our lives at times. That we faint instead of following. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm with you no matter what, Lord. I'm with you. I'm going to stick with you. And I'm going to do it by your power. It's going to be your word, your spirit. It's all about you. And instead they let me, 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 and my opinions, and my feelings, and my, my, my... Faint. And I think we're going to stand before the Lord and find out He was just getting ready to pour it out. And when we slay giants for this cause that we're talking about, we don't take a bow. See? There's a problem with people wanting the accolades and the rewards now. And they want to take a bow. We don't take a bow, we bow down. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a, I think that's a lot of this fainting is rooted in pride. A desire for people to think highly of me. Or for me to get what I want now. Kind of like a spoiled brat. Now. Mine. 
Our purpose is what? Now, don't just say that because it's on the board, but I want you to think about, is that your purpose? Our purpose as a local church, collectively, should be God's glory, but it only works when individually we're all committed to God's glory. There have been, a, there have been times where I've been kind of tempted. You know, people like to take preachers and, and they, people want a personality cult. People like to take preachers and puff them up. And then when preachers rebuff that, it, you know, they, they think you're not grateful. It's not that I'm not grateful, but it's not about me. But sometimes men start to believe their press, you know what I mean? And it no longer is about the glory of God. I love the ending of the little book of Jude. You ever read the... You want to you, you, you want to brag? You can say, "Oh, I read an entire book of the Bible today." <laughs> the book of the Epistle of Jude is about twenty-five verses. Verse twenty-five says, "To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion, power, dominion and power, both now and forever." Amen. I love that. I love that. Yes. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory. There is a cause. Don't faint, bow to God. You can either fall flat on your face fainting or be flat on your face bowing. You, it'll be one or the other. If you're not doing it for God's glory, you'll faint. If you will do it for God's glory, you'll bow. N none of us should have the arrogance. None of us should be about us. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not this kind of bow. <laughs> and I'd get on my knees and show you, but then I might not get up. So we'll keep going. You either bow now. This is another point i got to bring up. You either bow now or later. Mm -hmm. yeah. Isaiah. A lot of times you jump right to the New Testament. Isaiah said this in chapter 45, verse 22. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. Amen. Allah is not God. Amen. Buddha never claimed to be and is not God. Amen. Human beings and the whole New Age nonsense where you go out there and you look at this guy and say, I am God. No, you're not. God is the only God. I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. In other words, when God says it, He does it. Amen? Amen. Read verse 23 at the end there. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Every tongue. Not just believers, but unbelievers who reject Jesus Christ in this life will still bow. What does that mean? Well, this is just something I want to teach here. That which is in the Old Testament concealed is in the New Testament revealed. Mm -hmm. There's times where you read things in the Old Testament and you think, well, wait, wait, wait. Then you look Scripture with Scripture and you find in the New Testament it's revealed. And that very same text is then brought to full light in the New Testament. Amen. Philippians 2.10, New Testament revelation that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, there's no other name. Amen. The name of Jesus and that to every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. to the glory of God the Father. Amen. That's an awesome thing because we glorify God the Father when we serve the cause of Jesus Christ. Amen. You say, I want to glorify God, then serve Jesus. I want to glorify God, then preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. I want to glorify God, then pray in the name of Jesus and pray intercessory prayers for those that you love and those you don't love as much as you should. Pray for your friends and your enemies. Mm -hmm. And don't always just pray, God, get them. Amen? Amen. Amen? I mean, but for the grace of God, I'd be over there too and you'd be praying that on me. Remember, you serve and glorify God the Father when you serve the cause of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said it in John 15, 8, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. 
So you don't bear fruit to be saved. So why bear fruit? Because in bearing fruit, you're serving the cause of Jesus Christ and you are glorifying His Father. Mm -hmm. That's why we do it. We bow at the sound of one name. Amen. Oh man. I mean, I just sit and think about this and it just gives me chills. After, not just, just the rapture. Mm -hmm. And the dead in Christ have received their glorified bodies and all the living and we're with Jesus Christ. And at the name of Jesus, there is going to be a roar of praise like you and I have never imagined. Oh boy. Whew. Did you say something about goosebumps? Mm -hmm. By what name? That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. The name that is above all names. And that's why it says what name? The name of Jesus. Read verse 15 in light of that. Read it. Of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. You see, there's only one family, despite your new version perversions, one family, and it's named after one name. The name of Jesus. Whew. Many local churches... Everybody, we're not the only game in town. Thank God for that. We're not the only game in the, in, the, in the country, in the world. There are many unknown tens of thousands of gatherings like this all over the world. Thank God for it. But out of the many local churches, but only one family. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yep. I, you know, it's no different. You just think about it. You've got the DNA. I've got the DNA of Bob and Norma. And uh, Ancestry.com, learning all kinds about my family. But even right now, I've got family in uh, Virginia. I've got family in Louisiana. I've got family in Texas. Mm -hmm. I've got family in... I don't even know where some of my family is, to be honest with you. You know what? We're still family. Amen. Just because they're there and I'm here, we're still family. Well, if we can believe that on a DNA level, why can't we believe that on a spiritual level? That no matter where people are, and it, it includes those who don't exactly agree with us on doctrinal issues. I've told people, you know, we, we believe what we believe and we're going to stand right there with it. And if you can't agreeably disagree or be in agreement, then you just need to find one of those other local churches. But that doesn't mean we don't think you're saved. We know you're saved by believing that gospel message, you've repented toward God with faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ, believing that gospel, you're in that family. Amen. And all these differences will be sorted out. And when we're in heaven, we're not going to be in, in sections. You know, it's over there's a King James Bible believer section over there. And uh, over there's the mandolin. Uh, ma mandarin. I said mandolin. I play the mandolin. <laughs> mandarin Chinese group over there. And, and then over here's the NIV backslash. I mean, the NIV... Uh, you see what I'm saying? We're not, it's not going to happen. In heaven, it's just one big family. Right now, we're one big family, but in heaven, it's going to be one big happy family. Amen? <laughs> Amen. 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 We're, as we read in Ephesians 2.15, you might remember, having abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in Himself of twain one new man. See that? You can't believe that there's more than one family and you can't believe there's one family and not believe that we're all one new man. We read about that. That was in reference to the temple. Remember that they had an area where the Gentiles couldn't cross over. And uh, if they did, they, they'd die. That wall of partition has been destroyed. There's neither Jew nor Gentile now. There's one new man. And I want to say a word about the dispensational um, truth. Hyper-dispensationalism teaches, believe it or not, as clear as this is, they teach that there are two churches. There's a Jewish church and a Christian church. And they hyper-divide things. And they try to say that the body of Christ is not the bride of Christ. They're two different things. And the reason is, well, you know, the body of Christ is this and the bride of Christ is that. You're saying Jesus is going to marry the bride, then that, you, but He's also, uh, we are the body. That means He's going to marry His own body. And see, see how they, they take that? It, it's called taking it too far. It's metaphoric. And I said, Jesus is a door, right? 
Jesus is the vine, right? Wait a minute. There must be two Jesuses. Because it can't be a door and a vine at the same time. See what I'm saying? So when you over-divide, you hyper-divide the word, you end up in uh, heresy land. We have one new man now for to make in himself of twain. See, there was difference. But in Christ, there is now one new man so making peace. This unity is not denominational. Today there's this call to try to break down all the barriers and the bridges and the, build bridges and it's all come together in one big mammoth denomination. That will happen, but it will not be based in the gospel. And so it will be an antichrist denomination. It'll be, it will, it'll be the, the name of Christianity, but it'll be antichrist. It's not governmental. One of the reasons the Baptists started in the first place was to separate church and state. The uh, Protestants and the Roman Catholic always wanted a state church. They wanted the, the government to control the churches and to tax uh, the people and use the tax money for the churches. The Bible doesn't teach such a thing. It's not governmental. It's not even physical. Even when I walk up to Steve and give him a great big hug, and we hug and we're like, oh, I love you, brother. I love you too, brother. That's not the unity that is the real unity. The real unity is he has the Holy Spirit in him. I have the Holy Spirit in me. He could hop on a jet airplane and fly over to England, and we're still one. One body. It's also not earthly. God has never called us to build an earthly kingdom. And all this effort to do so has caused blood. You read... Christian history, you will see that the bloodiest persecutions of Christians was actually done at times by other Christian denominations. First and foremost, the Roman Catholic Church and the whole Inquisition and the Crusades themselves. They went to uh, grab the Holy Lands from the Muslims. They didn't want to give it back to the Jews. <laughs> they were going to get that land because they're building a kingdom on earth. And so that means anyone who wasn't a part of the Roman Catholic Church was persecuted as the Crusades traveled through Europe down into the Middle East and back. That's the way it goes. That's what happens when you try to build it an earthly kingdom because that's not what this unity is all about. This unity is spiritual and we're going to see it in Ephesians 4.13 till we all come in the what? Unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Wait a minute. It's a man. I thought we were the bride of Christ. Hmm. See? It's all according to the context. And this one man, this perfect man he's building, is the body of Christ. Also, in a different context, is the bride of Christ. This unity is in who? Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I mean, you can, you can talk to somebody that you've never met before. And when they say, they profess, that they believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins, was buried and rose again, and that they're trusting in that alone for eternal salvation, then you are looking at your brother or your sister. Isn't that amazing? And all differences disappear. You can hold their hand and pray with them. You can turn to another lost person and both of you can preach that same gospel to that lost person. That's the biblical unity that we're talking about. And praise God, one of these days it is going to be tangible. We're going to be in heaven as one big happy family. Folks, I just I love that. And when you see what's going on in Christianity today, even the fundamental churches, the ones who are sticking to sound doctrine, it seems like there's so much nonsense. So much division. We talked about how uh, in church history, one of the things you find is somebody will say, you know what, we should all be unified. So let's start another denomination. Just think about that. Yeah, there's a, there was this uh, Christian Union denomination that was started off of the Nazarenes because they said, you know what, we need to be united. Let's just do away with the denominational names and just call ourselves Christian Union. And then it just resulted in another denomination. 
Well, then there was a group in the Christian Union that said, you know what, we agree with you, but we believe you should be preaching the second work of grace. The entire sanctification thing. But we don't want to go back to the Nazarene church. We want union. So they started another denomination. The Churches of Christ and Christian Union. <laughs> and, and so forth and so on. You see church history. That's what people have got the wrong idea about what we studied today. And they think they're going to solve it by starting a new organization and bringing everybody in under that umbrella. And what you end up with is, you ever been to a ball game where everybody's got their umbrellas out? You can't see what's going on, can you? And that's what's happened in Christianity. Everybody keeps popping umbrellas. Come on, get under my umbrella. No, I think I can bring everybody under mine. You know, and then, oh, I don't. And then you end up with all these umbrellas. And you can't see what's going on. And that's why we do what we do here. We clear out the umbrellas. And we're not about a denomination. We're not about building an earthly kingdom. We're about preaching the gospel to the lost. And then we have a personal walk with the Lord, one-on-one. -on -one. We read His Word, we hear from Him, we pray and we speak and we share our hearts and we pray for others' intercessory prayer. And we love one another. We love one another enough that if one of us gets off into sin or whatever, we love you enough to tell you the truth. If there's doctrinal error, especially if it's serious doctrinal error, we love you enough to confront you with that but we do so out of a desire to see you come into full fellowship with the Lord. That better be what's behind it. That's the attitude we ought to have. And then we look for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, because that's when it's all going to come together. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank You, Lord, for this time in Ephesians chapter 3 and for teaching us to rightly divide the word of truth, also teaching us to be very careful in how we apply the text, not wresting it from its context, believing it as you gave it to us, applying it as you intended. And Lord, we just thank you for the unity that we share with believers no matter where we go, if they're truly saved, we have that unity. And we do thank you so much for the unity that we are going to share throughout all of eternity. Unity in Christ, where Jesus alone is glorified and all of us will be in a condition, a state of mind where we want to glorify Jesus. And so with that, we just give you thanks, praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Trusting every day, trusting through a stormy way, even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus that is all. Brightly doth his spirit shine into this poor heart of mine. While he leads, I cannot fall, trusting Jesus, that is all. Singing if my way be clear, praying if my way be drear, if in danger for him call, trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting Him my life shall last, Trusting Him till earth is past, Till His gracious advent call, Trusting Jesus that is all. Trusting as the moments fly, Trusting as the days go by, Trusting Him whate'er befall, Trusting Jesus that is all. Amen. For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 20, verse 21, King James Bible.